Welcome back to another edition of our Comprehensive Counseling Initiative monthly video update. This time we're with Southeast Fountain School Corporation, kind of in a tiny little pocket of northwestern Indiana, and we're with Ashley Hammond and Kelly Morgan. Um, Ashley and Kelly, do you want to introduce yourselves just briefly and tell us what your positions are there at Southeast Fountain? I'm Kelly Morgan, and I am the principal at Southeast Fountain Elementary School. I'm Ashley Hammond. I'm the principal at Fountain Central Junior Senior High School. Fantastic. Thank you both for being with us. A smaller rural community. I'm going to ask you just to describe a little bit of your community and then tell us also about what comprehensive counseling model you are working toward through your comprehensive counseling initiative grant. We, again, like you said, are a very small rural district. Um, we're actually about 1,070 students right now, and we're all located on one campus together. Um, but really, that plays our favor because I feel like that really provides um, kind of a cohesive staff across, you know, K through 12. Um, we are looking at the ASCA model um, as our counseling comprehensive program. Um, so far, we have done some things to bolster kind of the foundational pieces of that, um, and then are looking ahead in the years to come in the grant to now start putting more pieces of that together mm -hmm. um, to really, again, have that nice cohesiveness K through 12. So comprehensive counseling model will be the Ask a National model. Tell us about a strategy or an activity. I know you have a, several of them that are really unique and fun, but pick out one or two that you think are are really kind of unique that you're implementing or expanding through this grant? One of the strategies or ideas that has really taken off is our um, student backpack program. Yeah. Um, so we were finding that we have had a lot of students who were coming to school on Mondays and were hungry because they hadn't had anything to eat for the weekend. So um, we have paired up with some community partners and also used the Lilly Grant to um, start that backpack program even at the junior high level and high school level as it was only in the elementary and we were only able to fund about 13 backpacks every Friday and now um, I think we're up to 55 backpacks that go home every Friday um, for students and also siblings in the family so that they have food for the entire weekend to eat prior to coming back to school on Mondays. That's wonderful. I know you've had some collaborators working with that, as you mentioned. Is there um, a strategy or activity or even this one that you um, really had some success with or, or something you did maybe or through the grant that made it more successful? Uh, with the backpack program, I think what's been successful is just we really tapped into not only our community, but our staff as well. And so I know there's been some staff members that have really taken on the backpack program, has the liaisons for the school. Okay. Um, and we just found community members and, and organizations that we probably wouldn't have reached out to if it hadn't been for the Lily encouraging us to do so. And now that are regular sponsors of these children every year. And so I think it's just brought a lot of that support to the school that we might not have had otherwise. Um, and when we really looking at the data, um, at least the elementary level, we could compare those 13 that had it the previous year, and then, you know, they were the 13 of the 50 that got it last year. Um, we did see an increase in attendance, and we saw almost perfect attendance on Fridays from those students, so that wow. proves to us that they're coming to school to get the backpack. And I also think that as far as staff goes um, and that program specifically, um, there are people who stepped up to the plate to kind of run it. Um, flawlessly really huh. and um there are people that maybe haven't had a role in the school in the past um but they've kind of taken the leadership on of, of running that program and and so i think it's also helped um bolster some leadership from certified and non-certified staff in huh. our building yeah interesting because the grant encourages collaboration with communities, but also with your staff, your existing staff, reaching beyond the school counseling program. So, great. Uh, I'm going to ask you to be honest. Is there Has there been a challenge or a disappointment that, that you've run into? And, and if so, how did you address that? I think a, a challenge that we faced last year um, is that we were facilitating strengthening families through Purdue Extension, and we had piloted the program the year before, um, or that semester before we got the Lily, and wanted to continue that then every semester afterwards. Um, and at no fault of anyone, um, both of our Purdue Extension agents got new roles um, within the Extension Agency, but in another county. 
Um, and so for all of the first semester last year, we just had an interim who was not trained in the Strengthening Families program. And so we just kind of had to let that set dormant. Um, and then we kind of pieced it together, you know, with the help of Purdue, as well as several other counties just sending their extension agents to us, you know, a little bit of hodgepodge every week. Um, <laughs> but we were able to do it in the spring again um, and actually tripled our enrollment from the first time that we did it in the pilot. And so that was really exciting, well worth the wait. Um, but now we do have a person. Um, we're just going to work with that training piece again to make sure that we can oh, implement it with fidelity. Fantastic. That's great. I love that aspect because it's not only about the students, but it also engages parents and families. And it's ongoing. It's got some evidence, it sounds like, behind it. So it's a real positive. We um, talked to a lot of schools that have received the grant, and part of what they've had to learn to do is say no to a few things, um, or maybe just focus a little bit more narrowly on a few things instead of trying to do everything. Have you noticed that at all with your counseling programs, or is that anything that you can relate to? Well, I think with being able to add a college and career readiness coach um, to our team, um, it has allowed for our counselors to spend more time with students who need counseled or students who are struggling with social emotional needs. Mm -hmm. um, and without that, we would not you know, as you know, there are a lot of other things that a school counselor has, is responsible for, you know, grades, transcripts, um, scholarships, testing. I mean, the list is endless. And yeah. so adding that piece from the Lily has allowed our counselors to focus more on the counseling realm. And so I just think that's one thing that has definitely helped. Yeah, exactly. You mentioned some partners earlier on. Um, have you, and you're, in a, you're a small community, and I know we talked about this earlier, it's tough sometimes, there's just not a whole large pool to pull from sometimes. Um, have you, have you done some marketing? How, do, how have you engaged helpers or collaborators in your project? How have you gotten the word out? Last summer, we started a campaign letter that went home over the summer and then another that went home at the holidays. Um, and so it went out to a lot of our community businesses, organizations, you know, clubs, those types of things, you know, asking them to sponsor a child for the year. Um, and that through either the letter and then word of mouth from there, people that have, you know, chosen to participate in that has just made that explode as far as sponsorship. So I think, again, it was it's a simple outreach that, um, you know, really through the Lily we've been able to do. Amazing. And do you think that's going to help? And, oh, go ahead, Ashley. No. Um, I just was going to say, I mean, really all of the programs that we're doing have a, a piece of the community somewhere. Um, and whether it be something that we already had going that we needed to make bigger or we just started finding places that we could reach out to that could support us in different ways through the grant. So mm -hmm. um, through, I think through that planning piece of the grant, we were able to um, figure out maybe what we had going and how we could make it better in the community. And so then it kind of forced us to, to make those, build those relationships or make those contacts. And I guess it's really just shown us that the community is willing to support. It's just, we had to reach out to, to get that going. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's a nice thing to learn. What, what about sustainability? Is, are those efforts, do you think, going to help you with sustaining the, the work you're doing after the, after the grant expires? I think, yeah, the backpack we kind of went into, but also other areas would just be like Ashley said, you know, we've tapped a lot of community resources um, that are donating their efforts and times in these programs now because they like to see their time and energies going into our community. You know, yes. so they're putting back into their own children, you know, and, and the Fountain Central community. Um, so I think that comes over where we said, you know, the Strengthening Families program, we had lots of area churches um, and different groups funding the meals. Um, we're providing those every Wednesday to our families, you know, through Community Action. Um, they sponsor our Talks Mentoring Program, and they also tap into Twin Lakes um, Christian Camp in order to sponsor, you know, the kickoff and the end of the year celebration. And so while we're small and we thought that could be something that would limit us, I think we've really been able to max out all of those resources that we have to their fullest capacity. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, just two last questions and we'll wrap up. Go ahead. Do, did you have something else to add, Ashley? Um, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> okay. By the way, I like your sign behind you. Um, any any kind of uh, surprises or anything that you were kind of 
like, wow, this, this has happened to us, or a resource or, um, or a piece of wisdom that you'd like to, to share? Oops. Oh, sorry, I was trying to turn it up. Um, I don't know that I would say, I guess it, it was a little surprise. We, I guess one of the things we talked about is that we knew our community was very supportive of our schools, but I'm not sure that we knew how supportive they would be huh. um, if we just, you know, asked or, or questioned or um, sent letters or whatever it may be. So while we knew they've always been supportive of our kids, I don't know that we knew how supportive they could be. Yeah. And I think along those lines, you know, that social emotional learning piece is kind of a new word for a lot of people. And really, you know, what it truly means is hard for some people to wrap their minds around. And so we were worried we might be met with hesitancy, you know, that is this really a need and, you know, fulfilling it? Should that really be our top priority? But I really feel we've met very little resistance. I mean, I think there's been some questions, but, you know, once we kind of tease those out, everyone's really been on board and sees that that's a need of all of our children, mm -hmm. and that these are ways that we can meet them so that they can be successful in all areas. This is a, a case where your, your advisory council, your the new advisory committee you formed, seems like it's really helping with that too, getting the word out about the need as much as anything. We're hearing the same things from them. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like they see it in the community as much as we see it at school, you know, and maybe it might look a little different, but I feel like we all came to the table and we're seeing the same sort of um, need. And so it made it easy for them to support us. I think that's going to be uh, more common than not. It's kind of nice to know, well, in a way, we've got collaborators, others that are that are going to be willing to work with us in helping to solve right. these problems and address them at least. Okay, anything else to add? Any last words of wisdom or ideas or suggestions to other schools that might be going through the grant? Oh, yeah. I think, you know, if, if we had to give one, it would just be, you know, that don't expect two or three people to be able to take this on, on their back and make it successful. You need to build a strong team from lots of different places. I mean, make it broad um, so that you not only can get that buy in, but then you can delegate in order to have everything done, you know, efficiently and done well. Yes. Um, I don't think it's anything that anyone can expect to do alone. And so I think that's been a lesson that we've learned is just that power of delegation and, and bringing that team together in order to make it work. Fantastic. That's exactly what you're doing, making it work, it sounds like. <laughs> Ashley Kelly, thank you for your time. Thanks for joining us and uh, look forward to uh, talking with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you Have a good much. school year. Bye-bye. Thank you too.